hey, does this work? Oh, hi. Hey. Welcome. Oh. Now we can lock the room. Is this like a lawyer consortium or? This is a lawyer consortium, yes. Consortium, I'm oh, sorry. Okay. Oh, no, I wasn't correcting you. Um, whew. Welcome. Um, I'm actually really curious about all this. This is um, very interesting to me. Um, everything about video games and DMCA shit, obviously it's been a pretty hot topic recently. Am I okay to swear a little here? Yeah, you can yeah. you can swear here all you want. Okay, um, not I wouldn't not say PewDiePie the end levels of swear. Yeah. yeah, that seems to be pretty <laughs> um, a pretty hot topic right now. Yeah, but all of the all of the licensing stuff for online content is like super 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 vague. Um, you know, like half the people online, you know, doing music like make a living doing like covers of songs that they're not allowed to do, and people stream video game content oh, yeah. that may or may not be allowed. Like it's all very strange. Um, I just had some questions for you. I, I was curious in regards to the specific DMCA thing. Sure, absolutely. Shoot. Go ahead. <clears throat> so, let's say that a um let's say that a company has on their website, they uh, um expressly state that we're okay with streamers streaming our game content, right? In the mm -hmm. case with the um fire whatever, these guys seem to have done it. A lot of companies do this. I think Riot does it, Blizzard does it as well. Um that license, is it revocable at any time? Could they just say one day like, by the way, you're not allowed to do this anymore, and then you have to remove previously uploaded content or how does that work? Um, yes and no. So, oh, some of that's... I'm sorry, real quick, I'm streaming right yes. now, just so you know. Uh, you're fine. I okay. figured that from, yeah, from everything. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, so yes and no. Some of that's revocable. Definitely they can revoke the license at any time as to future content. But if can, can they issue a takedown for previously published content? Uh, I don't think so. The, the the gray area that we seem to be finding in the discussion, uh, at least between Brian Morrison and Michael Lee and myself and a couple others, um, may be whether a video on demand service like YouTube, wh wh whether you have to take down the previously created content from future publication to you know, video on demand viewers, and that's basically what YouTube is. But I would make the argument that you created the the uh, content under that original license, and so the uh, revocation of the license would only apply to the creation and publication of new content, and they would not be allowed to, at the end of the end of the court hearing, at the end of a full court hearing, they would not be allowed to complete a, uh, a, a either a takedown or a claim for copyright infringement um gotcha just, I, yeah i kind of want to ask like an equivalent question where the law i think is a little bit more settled and then i'm curious what your answer would be here so let's say that i create a song and i post this song on my youtube and i and underneath it let's say that i write um you can use this song for whatever reason you'd like to um you don't need to credit me or anything everybody ha you can upload this you can monetize it in the background of videos you can repost this to your channel whatever you want to do that's fine and so then a lot of people go out and they post that song and whatever let's say that mm -hmm. in the future i sign a deal with a recording company and the recording company wants me to release an album and and generally with recording companies usually they want ownership of of the material for at least some point for for some amount of time and and th there is some level of exclusivity with that. If I've already posted that song then, would I just not be allowed to license it to them that way? Would I be able to retroactively revoke that license in that case? Do you kind of understand what I'm getting at? What would you be allowed yeah, to do? Yeah, it's a complicated question, but it sounds like you'd be able to, you would not retroactively revoke, but you would be able to revoke um, any future, like, you, so if you granted this broad license to everyone, mm -hmm but somehow didn't put it in the public domain like let's let's the public domain's a thing and once you put a copyright in the public domain you can't get it back sure. so we have to avoid that but let's say that you've you in this scenario have somehow uh said everybody it's okay to use my copyright <clears throat> um you know that's you know go ahead and use it make whatever you want and then people make a bunch of stuff and then you want to make this exclusivity deal yes you probably can revoke people's future right to create new derivative works based on your, you know, now exclusive copyright. Um, I don't think you have any retroactive right to take down or, or, or change the agreement that people were operating under for those prior works before the revocation of the license. 
Gotcha. So when um, and then I I know that this is all really weird because it's all video game stuff, and I don't I don't know how much has been tested in court, but when Sega and Nintendo sort of I don't want to say retroactively because I don't think they ever explicitly is there like ever an any implicit agreement to use somebody's property? So people yeah, there po- is something called an implied license. Okay, so people have been posting. I don't know if you'd ever heard of this in the gaming community. People have been posting Nintendo and old Sega content for a long time, and then for whatever reason, because Japanese people are crazy when it comes to this shit, um, no, that Nintendo and Sega for some older it was like Shining Force and I think a couple other games. They went on like a rampage through YouTube where they started to like DMCA like everything they wanted money from everything mm-hmm. um, wh- wh- why now i'm asking you why is a company allowed to do that do you think it was just because this was never tested in court and they wouldn't have gotten away with it or do you think they it would may, be okay or they may never the creators the content creators who got hit with that may never have actually had a license to mm-hmm. make that content and and so it, they they wouldn't really be able to make the implied license argument so much Gotcha. So um, when I ask about an implied license, um, wh- I guess my question is, let's say that I create, um, and I know this can happen with, I think, trademarks if you don't defend them. Let's say that I create a certain mm-hmm. product and everybody is using it, and I don't go after anybody for it. If I, at one point in time, decide to single out somebody and, and either DMCA them or, or file some sort of claim where I say I want to revoke your right to use this or whatever, is my case weakened there because I've let so many people use it without saying anything? Like for me to say, like, you're not allowed to the- use it? In the case of trademark, absolutely. You basically lose your trademark if you don't protect it. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's either called naked licensing or I think dilution is in there someplace. Uh, I'm going to recuse myself from uh, from, as being an expert on all things trademark, mostly a copyright attorney. Okay. Um, Copyright, you are allowed to more or less selectively enforce uh, your copyright. You don't lose it by selectively enforcing it. You can lose it by over enforcing it. Okay. Um, okay. Cool. Those were the big questions I had. So it seems like the big thing then is that you can't really retroactively go after somebody that was operating under a legitimate license. That that wouldn't be allowed. You could prevent him from making future content, but he should be able to keep posted and continue monetizing the content that he already made when he was explicitly licensed to do so. Right. That's an should be able to. Now, let's talk practicalities for a second here. Mm -hmm. Um, In PewDiePie's case, it was practically a very good measure to take down the video voluntarily before anybody could strike his channel or anything like that. Sure. Um, And this none of this prevents a dispute. You can still have a full on dispute, even if you feel that you're that you're, you're using the material properly, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You can still get a very expensive court dispute. So none of this guarantees that you're not going to fight over it in court. Mm-hmm. And that sometimes is in, it influences and coerces people as well. Well, for him, as long as he doesn't counterclaim any of it, none of it should ever go to court, right? Who, PewDiePie and his yeah. thing? Yeah. I I I think if he I think he has to issue a counterclaim so then it it it, it, it can only go to court or nowhere else. Oh, because if they issue a copyright works? strike. Oh, no. I think with YouTube, if you issue a copyright strike manually, three strikes will shut down a channel. So I think he would have to defend in a court to save his channel. But typically, it, where, how it works in YouTube, I don't think for Google, when you file a takedown, I don't think those are like legal DMCA takedowns. There's like a weird distinction there, I think. Um, you would probably know more, but... No, I haven't heard... I mean, I've heard uh, some mention of this, but uh-huh. what, do you, what do you mean by it's not quite a legal takedown? I thought there was a distinction, like, um, the, w- if you go onto YouTube and you file, you type in, like, what your copyright takedown on, on YouTube's... Th- on, like, Google's platform, that it's not, like, okay. a legal DMCA takedown notice. That there's, like, a difference or some distinction there? Maybe there's not? Um, no, I think that's a bit of mythology... Okay. Uh, the 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 first off the the where the site or the page that i've seen says this is a notice under section 512 of the dmca okay of, of the copyright act gotcha. um but second even if it doesn't say that the whole point of all of that takedown procedure is actually to safeguard youtube's safe harbor provision to keep them immune from your lawsuit so yeah from the liability if they're not following it that's only opening them up to your claim that they're hosting copyrighted content when somebody else puts your content on their on their servers sure so they want to stay in the safe harbor so they want to comply with with the dmca so that is most definitely a dmca 
uh, compliant procedure. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and so far as the court stuff goes, so my understanding is that if I post copyright infringing material on YouTube, there's two ways that it gets removed. If I post copyright infringing material, if the content ID system matches it, they will flag it and they just tell you that you can't monetize it or maybe the money goes to somebody else and there's no, no harm, no foul. You can post it and it's fine. And then the second thing that can happen is you can post it and then another person can manually flag it. If content is manually flagged on your YouTube channel that means that one the video will be removed and two you will receive a copyright strike on your account now just because those happen you never actually the only way to actually take it to court is for you to contest that claim that they file because if you counter if you counter DMCA them or whatever, if they file a DMCA and you counterclaim and you say, well, no, this actually didn't happen, then what happens is the only way for that person to get your content actually removed, I think, is to take you to court um, next. I think, isn't this what happened with uh, Sargon's channel? Um, yeah, there were a couple questions in there. Sorry, um, yeah, go ahead. Yes, uh, a lot of that is the way YouTube has interpreted copyright law and instituted their own policies and strikes and three strikes you're out and all that. None of that's part of copyright law. Yeah, they just have to have taken measures to 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 safeguard their safe harbor. And within those measures, they've read, you know, let's do a three strikes thing and all that. They need to be able to go to court and explain their policy to a judge and sure. an opposing counsel, uh, basically. Mm -hmm. um, what was the second half of that then? Um, or I was just saying the only way for you personally to ever get to court, I, I think, is if um, is if you counter claim a DMCA. If you say this DMCA is illegitimate, then somebody can take you to court. Like that's why Sargon is going to court, not because he got DMCA'd by the lady, but because after she DMCA'd him, he counterclaimed ah. it, and then she right. Yeah. That part's YouTube policy as well. You don't okay. have to go through the DMCA process before you go to court, and you don't have to go through YouTube's DMCA process before you go to court. Um, it's just a good idea because if you somehow were able to resolve the matter there, that's really cheap. Uh, oh, okay. So it's more practical that you just don't go to court automatically. And honestly, very few people have the money in the stomach to go into litigation. So uh, that's that's one of the only reasons you don't see it more often. I think a lot of people would like to see many of these questions resolved by a court. Sure. And so we could all make videos or not knowing what we... Exactly what you can get what, away what the with. consequences were. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so that's good to know. So something I learned that I think is that I didn't know before is that somebody could take you to court over a video you've posted whether or not they've complied with, or not even complied mm -hmm. with whether or not they filed a takedown. Um, right. Um, there are many circumstances where you may want, say, for example, if you wrote a song and someone copied your song and their song is doing really well, mm -hmm. you may want to leave their song alone and sue them just for the royalties and not take down their song or whatever. Video, song, game, whatever. So uh, there are many... You, you definitely have many more options with copyright law. You don't have to just take stuff down. You can... You can sue and, and, and make claims without um, uh, taking things down. Here. Gotcha. Um, okay, so then moving on from that, then this is the only part of your video that um, that I'm that I'm very I'm really interested in this, and I, I might, I'm not sure if I agree with you. Um, so when you talk about licensing your content to somebody, um, you you use the quote uh, when all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Do you think that in, in, so I'll ask two questions for you personally and in court, let's say that I'm DMCAing somebody's content only because of a reason not related to copyright. Um, let's mm -hmm. say that everybody uses my material and then one guy does something and I really don't like it. I'm, and I'm going to DMCA him because I don't like his political views, his religious views or whatever, or, or maybe something non-protected or I don't know if religious, but like his political views or something, right? I do something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, is that would that be a, an ethical valid use of the DMCA, and would it be a legal one? Do you think in, in in court you'd get in trouble for that, or? I think yeah, I think that in my professional opinion, I think that could be a misuse of copyright. I would I would feel comfortable making the argument in court that that was a misuse of your copyright. That copyright is to promote uh, creation, to promote sciences, useful arts, um, and that you're not promoting anything in the spirit or letter of copyright by allowing speech to be censored using copyright with no other copyright-related purpose. Like, so... 
can disagree with the person all the way all, all you want you can revoke their license from the, the, then on out mm -hmm. but if you did not have some kind of agreement with them ahead of time in other words if they weren't like an employee or contractor or someone who signed an agreement that said here's the conduct which i i agree to conduct myself with the my, the code of conduct or whatever and then he violates that and the code of conduct says you can um uh, you you know we you can force me to take my video down or whatever. That's that's something different, and so that stuff like, happens. Um, so like let's well. say so let's say like a game company said something along the lines of like you can stream our content, et cetera, et cetera, but had like a terms of service or something where they say Careful, like if Leonard, there's two guys up there. Where if you say something along the lines of like if you um you know no racial content or no discriminatory words like that or bullying or whatever a lot in the game and then that's something that you're caught doing would that do you think that would be like a valid grounds to revoke your license to use it as copyright or it's, it's kind of murky I know. Uh, sorry, the first part of that was again. Um, let's say that there's like a terms of service for how to act while while. Um, while playing a game, right? So in our game, no racial slurs are allowed. And then let's say yeah. that you are, um, you use this, you use their content to create videos, and then it's something unrelated, you're found to use a lot of racial slurs oh. or something, right? W could you argue that like, well, you know, as part of the spirit of our content, we don't approve of this kind of behavior, he's using it, we're revoking his license to use our content at that point, or? Yeah, I think you're def definitely closer to a, a valid, um, misuse of of or, or violation of that license at that point if it doesn't explicit expressly say whether the conduct has to be on your channel or your game or anybody's game or just in public that's somebody's poor wording of the license gotcha because um, okay. that that could really be covered there but yeah you that's yeah that's much closer to something the, the facts of that scenario will probably be much clearer when you get to that actual scenario in real life. Okay, cool. Um, can I ask one final kind of personal, yeah. semi-personal? Please. <laughs> no, I'm kind of curious. Um, do, you do you remember the Sargon thing at all with the one lady? A little bit, yeah. Okay. Um, I don't watch really either of their channels, so I remember yeah. that she made the Hillary Clinton video, and, and I think he had some problems with it and reposted parts of it. Gotcha. Yeah, so in the court document that you were reading where it referenced him losing another channel in the past as a result of this, it was actually to me. So I'm just kind of curious if you thought that this was ethical use of DMCA, and no pressure, whatever, I understand, and I'm not looking for a professional legal opinion or anything like that, okay? Okay. Um, so I do a lot of politically related material on my channels. And um, I had a two and a half hour discussion with somebody else with, that was very, very heavily involved with political material. And Sargon had a second channel where what he does is he kind of posts stuff that he probably shouldn't post. That was the point of his second channel. Um, you know, usually clips and excerpts from other things without any type of commentary or recording anything else. Nothing like that. Not making a video and talking about it, but just verbatim posting clips. And um, in general, with my content, I'm usually okay with people posting things. Usually people ask me for permission, but, you know, as long as you're not, um, or, or I guess for the most part, like, I'm pretty okay with it. Um, but with Sargon, what he did was he clipped um, 30 to 45 second clips out of that debate, and then he kind of put an inflammatory title, and he threw it up on that channel um, kind of as a way to misrepresent what I was saying or whatever. But they were straight verbatim rips from my video. Um, so I actually filed four separate DMCA's on those things to remove them from his channel. Do you think that's a legitimate use, or do you think that was Ill Ill illegitimate or, or a misuse of the DMCA? Well, I, I, if you hadn't you know, given him a license to create whatever he wants, then mm -hmm. he wasn't relying on your promise or, or statement giving him permission to do that. It's kind of a gray area. It sounds like you used it properly. You used it to, to get rid of content that was actually infringing. Um, one of your copyrights is the right to control derivative works. And um, it you very well may have used it to control what you felt was a derivative work. I would have to see it specifically to have more like a more detailed opinion. But, yeah, sure. Um, I was just kind of curious. Okay. It, it, I... Yeah, hearing the short description, it sounds like it wasn't a fair use. Gotcha. Um, 
if it was a fair use, then you know, you're a scumbag. Sure. No, I'm kidding. Well, he, um, he's done longer form content where he's ripped clips from my channel, but it's been around a lot of commentary. So I never, I usually never touch stuff like that, or I never touch stuff like that. But um, his his argument for my stuff was the same as with the ladies, where what he did was he changed a title to uh, and it, to something inflammatory, but he changed the title and he claimed that the changing of the title alone made it a transformative work or something. That was his claim. So yeah. And there aren't even copyrights in titles, so that that's not a thing. Like you, you can have two copyrighted works with the same title, and that's not copyright infringement, yeah, as long you. as the works themselves aren't copyright infringement of each other. Sure. Um, okay. Cool. So, Did you have any final things you wanted to add or anything? Or that was, I think, pretty much. No, it's life? been an interesting day. Uh, I started this morning with a live stream where I got uh, a little worked up over the NFL thing, and so I'm going to cut that video up and post that at some point. Gotcha. And uh, didn't expect to have a second, uh, I don't know, this is, I wouldn't say emotional, this is more just concerning. Well, it gets, uh, gamers are very, gamers get very upset <laughs> very easily <laughs> over a lot of things. And the um, the copyright thing is a really difficult thing to deal with um, because uh, it's wielded almost exclusively emotionally oh, in the gaming mean, world, it learn. seems. Like, people tend to use it when they get mad at somebody. So, yeah, there's a lot of history and a lot of bogus legal shit that goes around, so. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, so, hey, I really appreciate well, you taking you. the time to talk to me. Thank you very much. I watch yeah, your uh, channel. So, yeah, awesome. Thanks cool. a lot. Have a, a good night. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Good luck with your stuff.